everyone I'm glad to be back at my channel and today I would like to share a project um, accompanied by a video tutorial for uh, creating a mini album that I have here on the table for this project I've used one of the recently released uh, collections by graphic 45 and it's called uh, Penny's paper doll family uh, at first, I wanted to create this as a gift set of um, cut-out paper dolls only, but as I moved on uh, in the process of construction, I decided to uh, make it a mini album and not only a gift set of the paper dolls. So anyway, um, in the tutorial I will share once again how to uh, create this project and those of you who uh, want to use the same paper collection or maybe something else are uh, welcome to use the tutorial um, so let's have a look at what we have here this is the front cover and uh, I don't know if you can see but it's a fabric covered uh, mini album this is how it looks from the uh, from the top Please don't mind that I have um, quite a large gap here on the spine. I made um, a certain mistake while constructing this, but in the tutorial I will share the correct measurements and you will be able to uh, complete this project in a perfect uh, way. So um, on the spine here I have um, a lace flower. Um, I've placed a um, on a bread uh, this metal key from graphic 45 and I thought it will be uh, cute to add some uh, clock hands um, and I connected them with the bread and covered the tails of the bread from the back side with the designer paper from the same collection um, here I have a little chipboard tag from uh, Penny's um, paper doll family and I've added um, a little ribbon bow. It's the same ribbon that I have here. And as you can see, the album is closed with the ribbon. So if we open the ribbon, we see that the album has six dimensional envelopes. And I will show the contents of each of the envelopes to you uh, in a second. On the inside front cover I have a side pocket and I've put some ephemera cards there not something uh, fancy I mean only the things from the collection and this is completely enough to uh, make your project look really beautiful and the vintage feel of this collection is just amazing I'm telling you the collection if you look at it you you understand at once that it's really versatile you can make family albums with it you can make some baby projects you can make a game set of paper dolls just anything you you could think of is possible with this collection so um, I have six envelopes I have five for each of the family members um, of Penny and the sixth envelope holds the cut out uh, paper dolls of the friends around the world and some accessories that belong to them so the first envelope and the first um, dimensional page is dedicated to Penny and this is her name over here so basically um, all these envelopes the dimensional pages are uh, bound with the twine and connected to the spine over here um, so in the tutorial I will show you how to do that so if we get back to the uh, envelope itself to the dimensional page you will see that um, the uh, cover here the window here um, is has a transparent um, plastic sheet and uh, here you can put not only the paper dolls themselves but you can also add uh, pictures that you want um, the album to hold and uh, plenty of pictures will go inside 
so there is a lot of room for store, storing the photos. So um, all of the paper dolls can be stored in this um, envelope. I made six envelopes from tracing paper and each of the envelopes holds the cutouts of the uh, members of the family once again and their clothes. It was a lot of fussy cutting job to do here but it was also fun at the same time and um, I, I really enjoyed uh, making this project. So when you put everything in the um, in the little envelope uh, it makes it easier to pull everything out together from the page of the album. It is also stored securely here although if you put it straight to the dimensional page without the uh, tracing paper envelope it will also be okay. This is the first um, envelope and the closure of it is magnetic so one of the magnets is under this uh, designer paper on the flap and the second one is under the uh, name uh, penny over here on the transparent uh, plastic sheet. So when you turn the page, um, I decided to um, add another ephemera card here and it's just stuck behind the uh, photo corners that are glued uh, straight uh, down to the envelope from the back side. So the next envelope is for the father. The inside is designed the same way as the previous one. We have uh, the uh, title here for the father and all the uh, cutouts uh, which belong to the father. So this is the second envelope. Once again, the magnetic closure. Um, the third envelope is dedicated to the mother. So it's uh, pink in color and has some lace and some chipboard uh, roses. Um, inside, once again, we have the same design. Uh, the title here says mother and the figure the picture of the mother and her uh, paper doll uh, and her paper clothes are inside the envelope and those of you who don't know I think might have already guessed that of course the um, clothes match the figures of the family members themselves and it's really really fun to uh, to play this game it's just like getting back to the um, childhood times when we did that and it was really fun I was even drawing some other clothes for the paper dolls that I had um, so the next envelope is for um, the older brother Billy and here is the envelope with all of Billy's belongings as well as uh, Billy himself here he is once again a lot of fussy cutting and that's why I decided to make it not only um, as a gift set with the paper dolls but also um, to serve as a mini album uh, for uh, storing the pictures because maybe some of you are not good at fussy cutting so they will still be able to uh, to do this project so uh, the fifth envelope is for the sister Penny's sister uh, whose name is Emily and here is the envelope with Emily herself and some of the uh, clothes and accessories that came along on the sheet of the designer paper from this wonderful and unusual paper collection. The, th um, the last, the sixth envelope, as I've already mentioned, is for the friends and 
There are lots of friends here. Lots of fussy cutting to do. All those tiny hats. Not to lose them. They will get back into the envelope in a second. Okay. There is even a dog here and some of the uh, traditional clothes for the friends around the world who are from uh, China and from Africa and from Netherlands and from uh, Mexico. So something really fun to, to work with. Uh, okay, so this is the overview of this project. I hope you like it and I hope you uh, feel inspired to give it a go. Um, the front, uh, the inside of the back cover is just the same as the front one. Uh, several ephemera cards to put inside and another ephemera card here which is held by the photo uh, corners on the page. Uh, so that's it. This is the project and if you like it, you are welcome to uh, continue watching the video and I will show you how to uh, create something similar. Thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned. The gift set that we will be creating consists of several envelopes which hold the paper dolls and their accessories. For creating the envelopes, you will need Mm, several um, elements, uh, two of them will be cardstock pieces and one more will be um, transparent uh, plastic sheet. So the first uh, cardstock piece will measure 10 and 3 quarters of an inch by 9 and a half and you will score it as follows. On the long side, you will score it at four and three quarters of an inch. I will move it that way so that you can see. Four and three quarters of an inch, five inch, then a ten and a ten and a quarter. Then you will rotate it to the shorter side, which is nine and a half inches, and you will score it at half an inch, three uh, quarters of an inch eight and three quarters of an inch and nine inches and um, so we will work with this uh, with this piece now and we will uh, need to make uh, some cut lines and we do them in the following way i will cut off the squares here and i'm cutting if i'm looking at the score line Let's say that the score line will have the um, left and right side. So the right side here, for example, is the kind of the inner side, which is closer to the uh, middle section of the cardstock piece. So I'm cutting along that inner uh, side of the score line. And the same way I did the cut over here. So, when you take that square piece that you cut off, you can see that score line there. This is what we need. If you cut this way, your um, envelopes will look just perfect and will be very, very precise when you fold them. So, I'm cutting... What I'm doing, actually, I'm cutting the square with the score lines off. So now over here we will create the flaps from this section which will help to close the envelope, to form the envelope. So to do that uh, we will cut off all this section and I'm cutting along the right side of the second score line that I have here. Okay, like this. Then I will flip it like that and I will cut the same way along the right side of the second score line. 
in the following way. Don't mind the second cut that I have here. It was the wrong one. Only the second one over here, okay? With the score line, which will be cut off. Now I will just take the craft knife and I will cut along the long score line. If the paper is like that on the surface, I will cut along the left side of the score line here. Then I will flip the page like that. And once again, I will cut along the left side of the score line down like this. Okay, this is what we have so far. Now you will take the paper piece and you will trim the little uh, piece off from the flap itself, not from the section which is intended for the depth of the envelope. You will flip the page and you will do the same on this side. Only in these corners, okay? Don't uh, touch the corners over here. So now what you will do is this. You will rotate the paper piece like so. And I have a new uh, camera setting that I might need to change because it's very uh, close to the working surface. But I will do that later. I, I need to think about it for a while, so just forgive me. And let's keep up with the uh, tutorial. So you will position the cardstock piece on the working surface like so. And you will take the ruler, you will make several marks with the pencil on the section uh, which is one and a quarter of an inch wide which will be um, used for uh, creating the depth for our envelope so on that section in the middle of the section you will make some marks at one and half an inch at four inches and at six and a half. So I made those marks already. I hope you can see them here, three places. Now I will take my um, Japanese screwdriver and I'm using the, um, the end piece here which has um, the width the diameter of the hole is one eighth of an inch. So I will punch out the hole in the places where I made the marks. Okay, like so. Now I will flip it to the uh, to the front side, and I will apply score tape to the flaps, to the long flap here, and I'm trying to stay close to the score line and not to the outer edge of the flap, but I'm not covering the score line with the tape, like that. The same goes, at, um, the same goes for the flaps on the sides. Try to stay close to the score line, but not to cover it with the tape. Burnish. Okay, now we will reinforce the score lines of the longer flap. And we will take another piece of cardstock, which is 5 by 8 inches. We will glue it down to this long flap of the envelope, very close to the score line, but without overlapping it, like this. Okay, now this will be the flap which 
we will close soon. But first, we will need to create the opening here in this piece. And the opening is, for the opening, we will need uh, to make some cuts, which will be half an inch away from the edge of the cardstock. And I think I could do it earlier before gluing down the 8 by 5 inch paper piece. But never mind, I can do it now as well. Okay, this way. This is what we have. Now we will take a piece of uh, plastic and it measures four and a half of an inch by seven and a half. And as you can see along the very edge from all the four sides, I've already applied a score tape, which is one eighth of an inch. So now we will glue this piece down here like that. As you can see, we have just a little border um, from um, the edge of the score tape up to the um, edge of the opening uh, here in the middle of the, of the flap. In order to glue this down as straight as possible, I will remove the uh, backing from the score tape only from one side and now I will first align my piece so that I have a straight border from all the four sides and only then I will burnish over there. Now I will remove the backing from the remaining three sections and I will complete the attaching of the uh, plastic sheet to the opening and the flap of the envelope. This way. Now this is something I wanted to do but it's not a must and um, you can uh, omit that step but I'm using the uh, corner chamfer and I will round the um, corners of this flap just a little bit. Now I can reinforce the score line from this side. And I will attach a magnet to this uh, side of the flap. The magnet will stand about three quarters of an inch away from this edge of the flap and it will be at four inches from the left and the right side somewhere here I have very thin magnets there are two of them here and you can see how thin they are so for gluing them down I'm using um, glue dots. I will pick up one glue dot on the magnet and I will place the magnet in the spot that I've marked a second before and then I will place another glue dot on the second magnet And I will close my envelope, making sure that I have that um, depth in it. Okay, I will close it that way. Press on the magnet. Open the envelope. This is what we have. And now I will add just a little bit more of the uh, double-sided tape 
to this magnet here to keep it in place. And um, this magnet now will be covered with the decorative element. I have a little um, flag or fishtail tag over here. So I will glue it down like this to cover the magnet. And um, this frame will be covered with a piece of the designer paper like so. So this is what we will do now. Um, actually, before that, I will cut a piece of paper to go inside the envelope over here. And the designer paper piece is four and seven eighths of an inch by seven and seven eighths of an inch. So I will glue it down now. I will also take another piece of the designer paper and I've already chomped uh, two of the four corners. This piece will go on top of the flap over here. And this paper, by the way, was four and five eighths of an inch by seven and seven eighths of an inch. So this is what we have so far. Now, as I told you before, we will glue down the frame to uh, this flap here but before doing that um, if you are also using magnets you want to cover the magnet with some um, decorative element and I'm using this piece of paper here I will be using glossy accents for gluing it down and once you apply the glossy accents you might want to wait for just a couple of seconds before uh, actually gluing it down to the plastic sheet because if you don't it will always move before it actually st starts to um, to dry uh, so I already know where exactly I need to glue that down I don't know what kind of uh, a die cut piece you will be using. The one that I'm using here is from uh, Cherylin and the set included three fishtail tags. I really like them. I like the look. So now when they are placed on top of the plastic sheet. I will just continue pressing with my fingers and making sure that the area around the magnet is glued down properly to the plastic. Like that. This is how it looks from the back side. Okay, so now when I have this done, I can cover the whole window flap with the designer paper piece. And I will give you the measurements for it straight away. Um, the paper piece altogether will measure uh, four and seven eighths of an inches by seven and seven eighths and to create the opening you will uh, draw the guidelines or you can cut straight away but the cut line is um, three eighths of an inch away from all the uh, edges of this paper piece as you can see I also applied the score tape 
one eighth of an inch score tape to the inner section of the paper piece very very close to the opening inside and before I'm gluing it down to the uh, window flap over here I will do the following I will remove the backing from one longer um, section of the score tape and I will add the wet glue to the remaining area on the paper like this now without actually attaching it to the paper I will first align this paper piece so that I have a nice border from the remaining sides and only then I will glue the paper and press to make sure that it sticks really good like this now you can remove the backing from the remaining three sections and add the wet glue <clears throat> as well just make sure you are really delicate with this piece and you don't tear it off the page <clears throat> like that and like that and now slowly slowly and gently oops you see this is what I was talking about that you have to be <laughs> really really slow when you do that Okay, now you can press hard and burnish and make sure that everything sticks properly. Use your bone folder to burnish because this frame is a little bit higher than the level of the paper. Don't forget that we have that transparent um, transparent uh, piece inside okay so this way it will look like that once assembled this is our envelope I still didn't choose the papers for, uh, for embellishing the back of the envelope and the inside of this flap so I might do it just at a later stage but the envelope is ready and on these decorative um, pieces I plan to put the uh, names of the family members I'm not sure if I will really do that but this is what I wanted to do on the first place so um, let's see till the uh, finishing stage of this project if I will really do that but anyway this is the envelope so you will create in the similar manner five additional envelopes one will be for Penny herself um, and then we will need five more for her little sister for her older brother for mother father and the friends so all together six envelopes here I have all of them and um, of course you can choose the papers uh, to your uh, taste and liking this is what I have here I've also cut out um, several uh, stamps and um, frames from the designer paper that I plan to use for embellishing the um, this uh, flap of each envelope so this one is for the father's envelope and uh, here I have one for the mother and this one is 
for the frame. And this one is for uh, Penny herself. This is the one that we've created right now. Okay, so now let's measure the, <clears throat> the thickness of this stack of the envelopes. It is roughly two inches. I'm not pressing uh, envelopes uh, down, pressing the envelopes down to measure. I'm measuring roughly, so it's two inches in my case. If the depth of each envelope is um, a quarter of an inch. Okay, so we need to attach the envelopes to something and then that something will be attached to the um, to the cover of the gift set. So this is what we will create now. The uh, inner spine which will hold uh, all of the envelopes and we will tie the envelopes to that spine. But we need to um, we need to know what is the exact uh, spacing uh, that we want to dedicate to each envelope. So I will do the math now and I will get back to you. Okay, so here we go. I based my measurements on the fact that the spacing between the holes that we've created is three eighths of an inch. So I want for each envelope uh, to have a slot which is three-eighths of an inches in width and this will allow the envelope to freely move um, on the spine of the gift set. Now I have this paper piece and it measures eight inches by uh, five and a quarter. I have two score lines which stand one and a half an inch, one and a half an inch away from the left and the right side of the paper piece and the spacing in between is scored at every three eighths of an inch. So if you want to know exactly, the score lines that I have are as follows. Well, let me tell you because you will definitely ask and we want everything to be as clear as possible. So the first one is at one and a half of an inch. The second one and seven eighths of an inch. Two and a quarter. Two and five eighths. Three. Three and three eighths. And three and three quarters of an inch. These are the score lines that you'll create. And then you will draw the guidelines on this piece. <coughs> You will position it like so and you will draw three guidelines which are at one and a half of an inch, four inches and six and a half. You will measure on the uh, left side of the paper piece, on the right side of the paper piece and then you will connect um, two marks to create a line which will definitely be straight in that way. Now, um, what we have to do next is um, to create the holes in this um, paper piece which um, will hold all of the envelopes. But I will not do it right now because if I take all the stack of the envelopes, although on each envelope I make, made the marks in the same places as here, you can see that the holes are offset a little bit and they are not exactly at the same level as I wanted them to be. So if I will be uh, doing the holes in this paper piece right now the way I want um, I think will be the right thing, I might have as a result the envelopes not to uh, not being attached straight to the spine and they will be all um, 
offset as well. So this is not what I want to be. So first I will decide which envelope will go after which. Let's say this one will be for Penny and this one for her father, mother, brother, sister, and the... Um, no, sorry. This one will be the sister and this one will be for the friends. Okay, I want to position them that way. So if you don't want to mix it all up, maybe uh, make the stickers and mark on each one of the sticker the number of the envelope because this will be important. once you will start to create the holes in this cardstock piece. So this is what I will do now. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So I will start with the first envelope. I will take it and I will open it. It's good that it's still unglued. We will glue it together, I mean the envelope, only when it will be already attached to this cardstock piece. Because until then, we will always need to open and close, open and close. And to make it easier, we want it to stay unsealed. Okay, so you will attach it to this cardstock piece, making sure that the score lines of the envelope are between the score lines of the paper piece. Exactly in the middle. Do the same from this side, okay? And then take a pencil and draw a hole in the following way on the cardstock piece. You see it's not exactly in the 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 guideline that we've created is not exactly in the middle of the of the circle that we have now. But the marks that I've created will help me to punch the holes in the exact places where I need them to be. And that way the envelope will stay positioned, uh, perfectly positioned on this uh, paper piece which will form in the future the spine of our um, gift set of the paper dolls. Okay, so this is one and I will write the numbers here as well. So let's continue doing that with all the remaining five envelopes that we have. I will wait, I will make one more together with you and then all the rest I will do offline. Easier for you to work with the envelope and with the cardstock piece um, if you have some paper clips to attach the envelope to the paper. That way it will not move. So now I'm working on the third one. I will align the score lines at the top first, making sure that the score lines of the envelope are in between the score lines of the uh, section which is intended for the envelope on the cardstock piece. And I will clip. Once I have it done, I will make sure that the line here is straight and I will clip the envelope down with the help of this paper clip to the cardstock piece and then I will do the same at the bottom 
making sure that I have a straight edge here and everything is aligned. I will clip it down from that side too. And now I can use the pencil in order to create the marks for punching the holes. One and two. Excuse me. Okay, some camera shaking. Three. Okay, so this is the way to continue. Let me do that offline now. Okay, here we go. This piece is all done. And I think we can use now the twine or any other uh, string material that you have. Let's take the first envelope and those same old paper clips. We will align the holes on the envelope and on the cardstock piece. We will clip two of these together. Okay, we will take a piece of twine. In my case, it's about 18 inches long. And we will start to string the twine from the inside to the outside of the middle hole. Now I need to hold this in order to prevent it from moving. Now I will string the twine through the top hole from the outside to the inside, from the inside to the outside of the middle hole again. And pay attention that you already have the twine over there. So just pay attention that it's not coming out. Then we string through the bottom hole from the outside to the inside like this and now we can tie a knot just in the middle here. like that and cut off the tails of the twine. Okay, now the first envelope is attached to the binding and we can continue to the second envelope. Um, I think that instead of the twine you could use the um, breads, but breads will um, will be less good because the envelopes will be less flexible on the spine and the holes of the envelopes can tear um, faster and <laughs> easier than um, in, in this case. You could also um, reinforce this cardstock piece with a piece of the cloth and um, this will be even better, even more durable, but I'm uh, pressed for time right now, so I will not do that, but that's also a good uh, way of uh, adding um, quality to your project. So I will continue now attaching the second envelope and before doing that, I will cut another piece of twine uh, to be 18 inches. I will open the envelope and I will make sure that the holes on the envelope itself and on the cardstock piece uh, match. I will clip it down to the cardstock. And I will start to string the twine through. So let's do this one um, together again. We start from the inside of the middle hole. Go through the outside of the top one.
from the inside to the outside of the middle hole again. Oops, let's use something to spring it through. Okay, just to make sure that I can catch it from here. Like that. Okay, let's make this tail shorter. All right, this way. Now from the outside of the bottom hole to the inside. And then we are ready to tie a knot. A knot should be not in the middle here, but really close to the uh, middle hole. And when you tie a knot, make sure that you are not pulling too tight on the on the twine because you can tear the the paper that way okay the second envelope is attached let's make sure that they are even here from the top and from the bottom and i think they are so we can continue attaching the rest of the envelopes by the way, it will be much better if at this stage you have the back of the envelopes already embellished with the paper as well as this inside flap. I still did not do that because I need to decide on the papers, but it will be much easier to glue the papers down when you, while you still can open the envelope fully and to lay it flat on the working surface. Okay, it took some time, right? <laughs> I know. But here we go. This is our result so far. And uh, what we do next, let's see. Let's measure the uh, central section of our spine. And the envelopes are already connected to it. So the spine now measures two and a quarter of an inch. And uh, we can continue to construct the cover for our gift set so if the whole envelope is five by eight inches the cover will be um let's say five and a quarter by um eight and well i don't want it to be eight and a half because it's too high so i think that eight and a quarter will be enough eight and a quarter should be fine yeah eight and a quarter is okay so five and a quarter by eight and a quarter okay so these are uh, two of the chipboard pieces that I will be using for the cover. I also have a piece of um, the same cardstock that I used for uh, creating the envelopes and that cardstock was from Basil, if I'm not mistaken. Let me show that to you. Um, yeah, this was the sugar wafer, 12 by 12 inches and there were uh, 25 pieces in the packaging and it was from Basil. Okay, so this cardstock piece is eight and a quarter by four inches and I scored it at seven eighths of an inch from the left and from the right side and then all the spacing which was in between those lines I scored at every one eighth of an inch. I also applied score tape to the um, to the side flaps on the side which is more curved when you score this piece you will see that it kind of curves inside so placing this piece like that on the surface I applied the score tape to the flaps and now I will take my chipboard pieces and I will apply them to the flaps 
of the cardstock piece up to the first score line from this side and and from the other side the same thing remove the backing and apply the cover up to the score line from that side too now I want to make a soft uh, fabric cover for my gift set in order to do that I will wrap the cover in fabric and I will also pad it with some felt so I have here a piece of uh, felt which is um, A4 in format I will glue down the cover to that piece first I will trim off the axis and I will use that axis in order to cover the remaining section for gluing the felt to the paper cover I'm using glue stick and I'm covering with the glue all the back side of the cover first apply a generous amount of glue make sure that it is everywhere on the cover okay now let's attach it to the felt like that this section is also sticky so I'm trying to keep my hands away from there not to mess up now I will take the long scissors and I will trim this part off and now I will apply this piece over here make sure that I stick it down to the chipboard cover and trim the axis off once again I decided to use some uh, gray color fabric for um, covering my album so I will trim the needed size of the fabric for the cover making sure that I have slight border from the top and the bottom as well as from the left and right and this is the fabric that I'm using from Waverly okay I can even mark first can use a pencil for that okay so I will lay down on the surface and since it has that uh, pattern with the polka dots I need to try and be precise when wrapping the cover I want to keep the pattern as straight as possible okay great so this is our cover and the fabric and once again I will use the uh, glue stick in order to glue the fabric down to the cover I will apply the glue first at the top of the chipboard cover and I will wrap the top section of the fabric I will try to pay attention that I go kind of go along the same line of the polka dots that I have here let's apply more glue ok 
Okay, I can even use a bone folder to burnish. Okay, now let's rotate this piece to the other side and do the same. Apply the glue and wrap the fabric. Pull the fabric a little bit towards yourself to make sure that it's not wrinkled on the front. But don't pull too much. It's not necessary. Okay. I think I will iron that. Or actually, no, it will be all stretched here on the spine and I will cover the front of the cover with the paper, with the designer paper, so I think it will be okay. But if you don't plan to use a lot of embellishments on the cover, you might want to um, do... Um, huh, what's going on with me? You want to iron first before you glue it down to the cover, okay? So now I'm cutting the fabric just a little bit before uh, I continue to wrap it uh, uh, to wrap it up. I'm cutting that in the following way. There are different ways to wrap the cover in fabric. This is the way that I do it. So you are welcome to use the way which is more convenient for you. Okay, so I will apply some glue here on the flap and I will wrap the fabric in the very corner. I will do the same here just to make sure that I will wrap the chipboard and that it will not be seen once the cover is ready. So now I will apply the glue to the chipboard cover itself and I will wrap the fabric like that. Let's see. Well, it's almost straight in terms of the pattern. Okay. Now let's do the same from this side. the corners first. Well, here I should have left a bit more of the fabric. But I think I can still manage. Now when you glue down this part of the fabric to the cover, make sure that the cover is not flat on the surface. When it's not there, when it's not completely flat on the surface, the, the fabric stretches a little bit and you glue down only the amount of fabric which is needed for um, wrapping it and not more than that because if it's more, then your album might not close properly while you use it. Well, here I really have a little bit of a problem, so I will just try to make to make it more sticky. And then I will pull it a little bit, making sure that the album can be closed and that I have a straight line here to keep the pattern straight as straight as I can at least. Okay, like this. Now all the stack of the envelopes will go inside like that. I would like to add some stitching along the uh, sides of the cover and also 
I want to add a ribbon closure to this one so I will take a ribbon and I will first mark the place where I want the ribbon to be it will be at four and one eighth of an inch because the cover is eight and a quarter okay so I will just mark where exactly I need the ribbons to be uh, sewn down to the cover and I will add them, I will add the stitching and I will get back to you. Well, now my cover is ready and I made a couple of mistakes in my measurements uh, so uh, I ask you not to uh, take into account the measurements of the central cardstock piece that I uh, say in the video just look at what is written in the subtitles and if you are uh, in doubt as for the correct measurements, just go to my uh, blog, to the post on my blog. The link will appear in the description box down below. And check the correct measurements for the central cardstock piece once again. Uh, so in this uh, particular case, I don't have anything to do already. And my cover will be slightly larger than needed. Um, but once again, I will give you the correct measurements and use that uh, from the post on my blog. So once the cover is ready in terms of stitching and uh, wrapping and everything uh, first I secured the uh, threads here with the uh, painters tape and I also embellished the cover uh, since uh, once we glued down the um, the envelopes to the cover we will now no longer have the possibility uh, to embellish um, to embellish it okay so you have here you you see here uh, two guidelines that I created and they stand a half um, one inch and a half away from uh, the edge of the uh, chipboard so uh, to those in those areas we will glue down the whole stack of the envelopes that we have uh, bound so far um, and uh, for doing that you will apply some strong adhesive to the um, flips of the um, envelope stack that you have. You can also use um, strong adhesive like, I don't know, something like the Yuhu glue, but I did not use that glue uh, since I, I want to finish with the project already and um, for the Yuhu glue I just had to give some time for drying so I will not do that I'm using um, some double-sided adhesive this one specifically is the new one by Prima um, so um, I will take off the backing from the tape and I will look at the top and at the bottom of the cover before I glue it down in order to uh, align to align the whole stack of the envelopes that I have here and I will glue my cover down like that I will burnish on the flap really really good to make sure that everything is glued down properly then I will move the cover to the other side and I will do the same here now why the measurement that I have is not correct because I added too much um, for that curve that I wanted to have so this for example is too much you see you will have less than that and it will look nicer because here it looks just too too bulky for the uh, thickness of the uh, envelopes that we have but um, anyway when I will do a similar second project well already with another paper I will take it into consideration but now this is what I have hopefully this is not what you will have but we deal with what we have once again so I'm gluing down the uh, envelope stack 
to the second part of the cover. Okay, and here we go. Our gift set of the paper dolls is almost ready. Uh, what you have to do other than this is to embellish the uh, inside covers and you have to embellish the back of the envelope. You have to embellish this flap of the envelope and well here Penny will be. So I have Penny and all her accessories cut out here. So I will take off the uh, backing from the flaps and I will close the envelope down and I will continue to the second one. And of course I will embellish the envelopes um, from the front side as well. So these are the things that I will do now. I don't think I will film that already because, well, you know, these are the easy things. And if you want to see the end result, um, you could do that anyway in the beginning of this video as well as in the, um, as well as you can see the pictures of the finished project on my blog. Let me just tell you that um, the size of the designer paper to cover the inside of the cover uh, from the front and from the back will be um, five and one eighth of an inch by by eight inches. Okay, and you will need two pieces of uh, paper measuring um, once again five and one eighth of an inch by eight inches. And well, this way you will complete your project. We'll see you guys soon in the upcoming videos. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.